welcome to the Raise Up Podcast. I'm Athena and... I'm Charlie. And this is... And I'm Amy Hawkinson. So uh, part of running a business and scaling a business is that you have to hire people. And when Charlie and I, uh, as we started to scale BAC Transportation, we realized that, oh my gosh, we have a lot of paperwork we have to keep track of and try to hire and do all of this stuff and we can't do it all on our own. And so we realized we needed an HR person. And HR, human resources, uh, it's, it's, it's something that I didn't understand when we first were growing that needed to be done at a at a really like intentional uh, from an intentional place and I felt like I was being intentional but it was coming from a place of compliance like do I have all the employees paperwork for the state and the federal government and do I have my DOT stuff because we're DOT regulated in the transportation realm and it really that was my mindset was we need to keep compliant and then as I grew in my leadership role, I realized this, this has to be a human resource, not just a compliance office. And uh, Amy is BAC Transportation uh, HR Director. And so Amy, thank you for coming. And uh, tell us, what is it that you do here at BAC Wheelie? Well, it goes the next 24 minutes. <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, I love the fact that all of the humans that are part of BAC, um, they have to have some sort of connection to this department. Uh, and not just uh, onboarding and compliance, but you know, training and, uh, and then ongoing through payroll and, and everything that we do. So we get to see everybody at the very beginning, all the way through the process and up until they leave the company. So I love that we get to have interaction with people um, in the company all the time. So what you're saying is, is that if you're not a people person, do not take an HR job. And if you're hiring for an HR person, they have to like humans. <laughs> or really like paperwork. That's the other That's thing true. too. That's true. Uh, I have a team member who uh, told me that they were just not a people person and they're, they're, they're warming up to the people side of things, but they were really, really great at um, I need this filed and this relabeled and, and established naming conventions for this. And so um, so that piece is really important so on the, in the compliance people. world as mm -hmm. well, too. Yeah. So I think that you can find the right seat for people in HR uh, based on um, how big your department is. And what your needs are. I mean, <clears throat> if you need a person that can do filing and get paperwork and behind the scenes, that's always important. I mean, if you are relying on my skills of putting in a reservation or, or doing HR work, we're in trouble. So, I mean, that's always why we hire out who we don't know or what, what, what we don't know, I guess, is what we do. So, right. Charlie, you have seen the HR department, like how it started and where so, it so, come today. It's so funny is when you said compliance, I'm like, we were just hitting the bare minimum. I'm like we were, when Athena was doing it, we were hitting all the federal, state, and city compliances. But, you know, that's kind of where we were at with it. I mean, we did do some evaluations and stuff, but... It's come so much differently now. I mean, you know, at our top number in the 270s of employees and <clears throat> where we're at, it's like, it's funny. It's like I get to play undercover boss quite a bit because I don't get to meet a lot of these people. And then when I do, you know, it's kind of interesting. And everybody's like, hey, boss, hey, this. But then they see me out washing cars or driving or whatever it might be needed that day. And it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm just a worker B2. I'm, I'm not a computer guy. I'm not behind the desk. I'm I can't do it on my iPhone, it's probably not going to get done. People know if they need to text me before they email me if they want to get a faster response or I'll look at my emails at the end of the night and kind of go through and scroll and figure out what I need to keep up. But HR has been huge. I mean, it's been great. Amy has been awesome. Christine was there before us. You know, mm -hmm. we had we had different levels. People, I think somehow the universe has brought us different people at our different times in our lives that we just continue growing. And we always say that, you know, it's not who we have now, it's who we're getting later and who's going to be in our life and for what reasons, you know, we have some people that our employees are DGM, see that, that I think people bring into our lives that we are, we're better for it and makes our company better for it. So. And, and the goal is, is that they're better too, no matter how long they stay. And that's really the whole idea around Raise Up is, um, that we're not just, we're, we're, it's a mutual reciprocation of growth, understanding, and moving forward in our, in our mutual journeys of life. 
Is there any particular moment that comes to mind for you where you are like, I am so glad that we have HR to like handle that or to come alongside leadership and kind of navigate through that? Every time we need employees or every time we need to let an employee go <laughs> or anytime I have a question about HR files, I mean, <clears throat> HR is a, uh, a very tool and mechanism that we have in our company that, it, that brings people in and lets them out too. So, I mean, we have it both ways, but the training aspect, the, all the drivers we need to pin in, the extra, uh, the extra uh, Wednesday or Thursday that we throw another academy in there and over here, and we have, and, it's, and I don't know what it's down, what's it down to, Amy? How long is it uh, for the, the hiring orientation. process? Orientation, uh, we have our class down to about three and a half hours right now. What was it when you first started? Uh, well, when we first started, there was nothing. That was one of my first two directives from Athena when I started here three years ago. Is she? I wanted to standardize it because yeah. I mean, we had somebody else who was doing it, and she did have it, but it was a lot of it it's was a two-day academy, it paper, was, yeah. and a whole lot of like paper. She believed in paper. So we've kind of brought that down to where it's more manageable. I mean, enough where we were giving them food and candy because they were there for such a long time getting stuff ready. <laughs> I always told myself that I don't know if I'd get hired within my own company if I had to fill up all this paperwork and do all this stuff. But you have to know all the different layers we have. We have military base, we have the airports, we have the badging, we have the criminal background checks, we have the drug testing, we have everything that's involved. So it's not as easy as it was when we were a, <clears throat> a two limo and one party bus company that we had that half dozen employees that work for us or a dozen people that work for us. It's a whole different deal. And we've had people, you talk about ZBs and some of the other people have been here for quite some time. They always say, I remember the old 54th where we had barbecues, we did that. Well, now our barbecues have to be a little more planned out because we're not just buying a pack of the steaks and a couple of things of chicken, we're buying enough food for 80 people now. And so mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's gotta be more intentionality, which HR takes care of too. So if you think about some of the things back in the HR days, it's just like, you know, where we've come to having organized classes, to having the training, to knowing the culture of the company. I mean, it's just, it's it's been way different. Right. Is there any person that stands out in your mind, Amy, when you first, when you came on as, I mean, I know you've met a lot of humans in mm -hmm. these, these years with us, but is there one person that stands in, or one story that stands in your mind that you're just like, I was able to do something for them? Like in a oh, way that so I didn't times. expect. Yeah, so many times. I mean, people come to us uh, because they're looking for a job or a team member comes to us because they need help with a uh, daycare assistance paperwork or there's been uh, a death in the family and how can we work this out so I can go back to uh, to you know to where my family is from and, and make that happen and still you know and still make everything work so I just love that there are stories like that every single week. I mean, there is not one time that goes by. I mean, even this week we have a, a lot of folks that are family related here and and now we have a family of three and there was a death in the family and they're leaving tomorrow to, to go back to the Philippines for three weeks. And they were very concerned they were gonna lose their job and what were they gonna do when they got back? And I just said, you know, just just go, go be with your family, do what you need to do. And when you get back, we'll get you back on the schedule and it'll be just fine. And just to hear them, just like that relief in their voice, cause they really thought they were gonna lose their job because they weren't giving us two weeks notice before they left for the funeral. And, um, so just Kills little things like that. Funerals are three weeks long. Like, I don't think I've ever been to a funeral that's more than a day and a half or two days long that we've gone to. But I can tell you some of the different cultures have really, and that's it's one an of the opening. diversity fees that yeah. we have is some of the cultures that we have really believe like they have the pre- they, they have, have the pre-party, then, the, then they have the party, and then they have the after party, and that's my best way of saying well, it. But then I also have to fly to the other side of the world as well, too. I mean, yeah, it takes... I mean, we've flown to the other side of the world. It's only yeah. 24 hours there, 24 hours back. You can't, you can't <laughs> get me past this whole thing. It takes a week to get there, a week to get back. I, if we haven't been there and done that journey yeah. and that flight, and don't get me wrong, we like to go for three weeks when we're going to because it is a journey. It, but, it's, a, yeah. it's a financial journey. It's, it's, and a, it's a whole piece. physical journey, but, you know... Yeah. That's one of the benefits that HR gets to see is the diversity within the organization. 100%. And you, you get firsthand knowledge of when we're, we're working on how can we create a video that has multi-languages, what languages do we need to offer for training on that video? And it's really, I mean, like people refer people that they like. And so it's like um, we end up with pockets of ethnicities. Well, it's yeah. a win-win too because we get some of the we've had some absolutely amazing employees that have come through and their family members have come to work for us and we've had multiple generations of families working here because it's a good safe place for them and they like yeah. it so I, I really enjoy that part too 
but the only thing I do is when somebody passes away, then usually that you know, whole pocket is twenty percent. Twenty percent is leaving out the door. I'm like, holy, you guys can't all go to the same party, you know? Yeah. Uh, we've we've uh, made comments that we should create a family tree here at BAC, and um, it might not have as many branches as uh, some other places might. Uh, but I think that's another piece to HR is that when you have such a diverse group of team members like we do, it's not just learning your job and learning compliance, but it's learning about the Samoan culture and learning about the Filipino culture and you know all these different pockets that we have so that we can understand them and when they're coming from so that we can help to serve them as a department as they are serving the organization. And that symbiotic relationship is really, I think, what's made us so successful that people don't want to leave. And when they do leave, they always want to come back. And, uh, and we see a lot, of, a lot of folks that are like that. And uh, we just had the job fair um, over at the airport and several people came by and, um, and they may not have left on the happiest terms when they left. And they said, when, when, when is our time up that we can come back and apply again? Because now we know what we've missed. We really like it there. We've, we've gone other places. And, and, and it's, it's, this is a really good company. And, and that always just warms my heart that, we, that I'm part of the culture that can help establish a really good relationship with each one of these people. And so what you're talking about is those individuals that were part of the accountability measure and they weren't in a place, either a season in their life where they could fulfill the, the personal requirements that it was gonna take to fulfill that role. And that could have been that they couldn't get to work in a, in, in a timely manner and they were hired for shift work. It could mean that they, um, like give another, they, they couldn't pull it together. Some of the young people sometimes can't pull it together on the uniform and uh, showing up, how we show up is important to us. And it resonates an energy of I'm here and ready. And that's something that uh, we, we work to continually keep at a certain status. Well, so. each one of those raise up measures is is a reason why somebody would no longer be here with the company you know responsibility accountability integrity you know any of those um, uh, are reasons why they may not stay with the company and it could be on their end too you know they weren't serious enough to have a job yet or be in that state of mind as well too and because they weren't taking it serious enough they weren't putting in the effort to be here um, as well so. and i guess to let our listeners know so we hire at the early age of 16 is yeah. the youngest we can hire. We have a lot of uh, people at airport ambassadors mm -hmm. that work and then we have to give them a, one of their first jobs in the field. And, you know, one of the important jobs of taking care of somebody that might have a disability or, or anything that they might just need some help getting from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. So it really the gives them, yeah, working at the airport. So it really gives them a good idea. So when we're talking about some of those people, we're talking about the teens, but we're actually talking about some adults too, because we have some late bloomers here that just basically <laughs> play a lot of computer games and mm -hmm. don't really have that interaction skills and we try to give them that and give them some culture in here yeah we had a gentleman that joined us and uh, I will never be the age or weight guessing guy at the fair that's just not a, a trait that I have I'm not very good at that but he comes into the class and you know we're going around and and he's like yeah this is my first job and I'm thinking I'm pretty sure this guy's like in his 30s like um and so at a break I went and I looked up his birth date and lo and behold he was in his late 30s this was his very first job he had never had a job before, and um, and it, it, it took a lot to be able to to get this person into a groove where they knew how to be a really good team member. They didn't know how to show up on time. They didn't know how to to even do a call out. You know, they just were like, "Well, if I'm not in the mood to get up in the morning and go to work, I just don't go to work." And so uh, it's a part of helping them to train to that season in their life too. Is that person still with us? They are not, <laughs> okay. but it's another person we uh, but they're, but they're actually part time. of, but they're part of that other story. They literally, they, they, they know that their six months is coming up really quick. And they want to come back. They have, and they have seen Chelsea out at the airport. Um, this person worked for Chelsea and um, they have, they, they, they've seen her recently and they're like, I'm, I'm just waiting until I can apply again. This is the date I have it on my calendar. I can go apply again. And, mm. Uh, and the nice thing about that is people are seeing growth in themselves because those folks aren't just welcomed back in like just carte blanche. They are they're re-interviewed they're re -interviewed and we're interviewing from a different standpoint. So what's different now? Yeah. Um, how did you grow? How did you learn from this? And, and how is this, this going to be changed in this new season of your life? 
So it's got to be beneficial. You, it's got to be beneficial on both sides. It's got to right. work for them. It's got to work for us. For all of you who live in a smaller region where your pool is a little bit on the smaller side, like we do, like this is a great strategy for reintegrating somebody that maybe didn't work out initially. But if they know, hey, these are the things that we expected and we understand that you're not there right now, but you do have the opportunity to reapply again in six months or eight months or whatever. And if they're aspiring to that, they know what's expected this go around. And maybe that time apart like made their heart grow fonder and they're ready for that next step into their responsibility level. So. And I think what we look at too is, is this person rehirable? Did they have the personality, something like that, but they were just missing a functionality that didn't make them get to work. So when we do separate from somebody, we actually put down if they're up for rehirable or not. If they're not, it's not even a let them reapply because they're not eligible for rehire. But if they do and say that they lost their ride or somebody had a kid or something like that, that they had to leave in a different circumstances, we always look at those ones and try to get them rehired up here. Yeah. You know, one of the most memory ones I have is Amy came to me and told us one of our top people that we were um, lacking some... Uh, uh, some immigration paperwork for somebody because during COVID, everything just got put back on the mm -hmm. backside. And she's like, Hey, I don't know if this person can still drive or work. I'm like, Whoa, don't, don't, don't get, don't the, get crazy. Don't now. get the train off the rails here. Hold on. We, this, <laughs> this is one of our top very, driver, yeah, one of our top drivers. And I said, what's going on? So we dug into it. And of course we have friends that work in some of the senator's offices and we know we reached out to them and just said, Hey, we're really struggling. This person's put this application in. Is this going to delay us? Are we going to get in trouble by not having a proper documentation for them because it was past his time? Last thing we're going to do is have some state or federal agencies coming down looking at us yeah. at a place that was negative. And he says, no, Charlie. He says, we're so bogged down. Let me get this. We get some paperwork filled out. Within two weeks' time, we were able to get him his card that he needed yeah. <clears throat> that he had been waiting uh, nervously for almost a year and a half. Yeah. And that was the now. other piece is that had you not brought that to our attention, like clearly they had been struggling to like wait and worry and and we had no idea. Like right. there's just not, they don't, like this particular individual just wouldn't be like, hey boss, by the way, you know. Um, well, he had no idea that we could help him in that area. He thought they were doing everything they could possibly for themselves and um, they were asking the questions, but you know, it's just actually knowing the right person to get to the right people. and. Uh, I'll say that Lisa Murkowski's office really moved that up to the stack and our state senator, our state senator and um, this is what they do for people what she's and a lot of people don't understand that the senators are really advocates for their their For constituents, constituents. Yeah. and so we went to them and we've learned how to use that when we have to and uh, man I can tell you the letter and the uh, the text message and this from both of them just so thankful because you know, when you're working on an expired card um, that says that you can work in the U.S., that is a scary moment for them. But of course, no fault to them whatsoever. He's been doing it for quite some time, just not with the COVID process. Everything was just so backed up. He'd been re-upping his card as needed. For yes, right. yeah. but it wouldn't uh, re-up him. So that was the nervous part of part of us. And Amy's like, hey, I'm like, hold on, don't get off the rails here. We got to make some phone calls here real quick and definitely got a letter stating that was okay. But yeah, that, that was one of the great HR stories I remember. It's just something like, you know, so something for us to make a few phone calls and fill out some paperwork. And then all of a sudden he was back on his way. And so. it took you being connected to those team members to give them a safe place to communicate, hey, I have this fear going on and I'm not sure what to do about it. And I think that that's really the story that HR has here is that there are, I'm, when I've had to take some phone calls, I mean, there's been times where there was one story in particular where there was a young person struggling at the airport who didn't live at home. They were kind of doing some couch surfing and I think I answered the call out line that day for, that. for whatever reason. And he, he basically said that I've been evicted from my apartment, the landlord has locked my uniform inside and I don't know what to do and I need to come to work. And so there's just real things that happen to people. And a lot of the times, if they're working at the age of 16 or 17, when a lot of other kids are doing like after school sports and- Or they're in school. Or they're in school. Like there's a reason why these people are working and it's because they're, they're working to support themselves or they're figuring out life because something has happened. And I was like, hey, do I need to like, drive over there and talk to your landlord, do you have an adult to help you? 
and he was like, I will let you know if they don't let me get my clothes, but um, I'll let you know. But sometimes that's what you do is you show up as an advocate, you pick up people like there's been times where I'm like, hey, we got a meeting and you're like, I'm just dropping off an ambassador at the airport. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, why are you doing that? And you're like, because it's a long story. I'll tell you later. Um, but that's what it's like this bigger piece than than what I ever imagined HR was. And that was the vision that I had when you came on. Right. Well, when you told me in the very beginning about uh, this position, you said that we're the resources for the humans that work for us. And so we've really carried that through all the way through from the very, very beginning. And during orientation, I ask everybody, so how many people think that HR is like the principal's office from high school? You know, everybody raises their hand. And, uh, and I said, but that's not us here. Here, we're the happy place. Here's where you come, where you just need a piece of candy in the afternoon, or you need to come because you need a hug, or you need somebody to look over a lease for you. Like, we are truly a resource for you. And I think by establishing that in the very beginning, that starts this line of trust that they can come to us when, hey, you know, my mom just left and I've got my brothers and my sisters and I'm trying to take care of them and get them to school. And, and you know, we have this problem or that problem. We just have all those kind of things that come into the office because we've established this trust from the beginning. They don't think like we're the bad guy. Well, I think they think we're advocates for them. And that's what we try to is, is promote as advocacy. I mean, um, <clears throat> we want to help them into a, a place that's safe and good, but it has to make sense for us. Again, the double fold. It, what, their, what their problems have to be able to, if we can take those problems on, or be able to willing to work through some of their navigation or their their waters there. And, and sometimes we're always trying to figure out and reevaluate, but if it's the right thing, it's legal, it's ethical, it's good. You know, we try to do the right thing on that stuff. And it's, it, I, I'm sure as you guys, as business owners and people out there, you guys are here this, we are the norms of the Cheers bar and we get to hear everything. But the problem is, is some people, they just don't have a person to talk to about this. And I think we pick the airport oh, quite a bit because it's such a large uh, part of our staff out yeah, there it and it's it, it's got all age brackets it got from 16 all the way up until the 60s and mm -hmm. and plus so it's such a diverse group um, and it's so neat to be able to see the different ways and people's first jobs I mean I remember when we first started it how long it's been the will 2018 so six years ago and some of the uh, first people that came on board with us and now they were for Alaska Airlines we have other people that are you know in scholarships and volleyball we have some all these other people that have just so history of one of their first jobs was working for us and I think when we decided that we were going to take on that department, my I was excited because I'm like, we can actually like start to raise raise people to love the industry of transportation. I'm thinking, man, this could be like a, a pipeline. And what I didn't understand back then was this is a pocket of the community that we never had access to before to just like show up in our community. And don't get me wrong, we are absolutely not a... Um, social services organization, but the um, the important piece is, is when you take a little time to just be present and to seek understanding, like our core values say, sometimes what we, what they think is an unsurmountable challenge to overcome, it's a phone call for Charlie. It's a paper to fill out for one of the HR team members. And it is just this unbelievable deposit that gets put into an individual's life that allows them to like really feel like they're seen and heard and they belong. Well, I think the other part that you really put towards too is that we wanted to build a foundation for them, not their first job at a fast food restaurant or something like that. Something that has to do with dealing with people that is a service and the service part of it is really, I think the big part of it yeah. is what we give is these people get to go meet people <clears throat> in sometimes their most vulnerable areas that they're gonna help them from point A to point B and they're gonna be kind, they're gonna be courteous, they're gonna ask if they wanna use the restroom, get something to drink, get yeah. some food, take them down and after a long day of flying and after them just getting the anxiousness to get on the plane, we have that interactions with them back and forth. So I, I really enjoy that part of it too. Yeah. I love that you mentioned service because we spend a lot of time in orientation on service. And when we talk about our GOAT goals, um, the first one is great customer service. And so we talk about, literally we break down who are your customers. And we talk about, for example, out at the airport, the ambassadors, um, who's your customer? Oh, the person in your wheelchair. Well, Yes, the person in your chair is somebody who you're serving, but 
who is the real customer here? The real customer is Alaska Airlines because they're the ones that we're doing the contract for. So we have to serve the person we see in front of us, but also understand that there's people in the background that are important to this piece as well too. And we have to think about that as that they're a complete customer. And everybody just like starts to understand like the depth of what customer service really looks like. We talk about it with our CSAs, you know, who are you serving? You know, um, are you serving the person that's on the phone? That's what they're, oh yeah, the person on the phone. Yes, you are, but you're also serving the booking agent who booked it, or, you know, you're serving the driver, That's you know. The internal customer right. is, and, is the team members yeah. that we're serving. Internal, external customers, silent customers. We talk about all these different invisible customers. We just talk about all these different levels of customers um, because one of the things that, draw, that drew me into the Grimm family um, outside of BAC was because we were all connected by service through philanthropy, through all the different things that we participated in the community, it wasn't business that drew us together in the beginning. It was all different levels of service that we drew each other to. So. Yeah, we would go to a gala because we were invited to everything, I think. And Amy <laughs> would be there working it or volunteering over here or, or running at a table. that. <laughs> or, yes, yeah. or, or sitting at a table. So um, absolutely. Well, I hope that this gave you a little more insight into really what the HR department could be in your organization one day or an understanding of that it's just, it's so much more than just making sure that you have all of your compliance together. If you're looking to scale and to build an organization that has many team members, or if you're just looking for other ways, like how can I just grab a hold of retention and just a little bit more. So. Thank you so much for joining us today at Raise Up Mindset. And thank you, Amy. We're, yes, you. we're going to talk about training as a powerful tool in our next episode. And so this will be um, part one of two. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us on the Raise Up podcast. You can find us at raiseupmindset.com. Our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from Instagram, Facebook, our shorts. You can download the podcast straight from the website. If you're listening on another platform, please like, subscribe, share. We're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you want to dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast. Click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again. Bye-bye.